appreciate public speaking about some people really don't need to be introduced to. In this case, this is absolutely true, but I'm going to tell you about this wonderful woman anyway. As governor, Maggie Hassan has done more for hardworking New Hampshire families than any governor that I can remember. And she has done it by bringing all parties together in a bipartisan manner. She just recently passed a responsible budget. She has frozen tuition in the New Hampshire State Universities for the first time in 25 years. She's a firm believer that right to work is wrong for us. But most She has fought and passed legislation that would extend health care coverage for more than 40,000 New Hampshire citizens. Brothers and sisters, please join me in welcoming the 81st governor of the great state of New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan. Because of our strong workforce, businesses grow. We attract new innovative companies to our state. We create high quality jobs. And we work each and every day to strengthen the middle class. I am always so privileged when I am trying to recruit businesses into New Hampshire to be able to just say, come to New Hampshire, you will find workers like nowhere else. And uh, then after I talk with business leaders who come in and maybe moved a business here or started a business here, and I'll see them the next year or two, they'll say, you're right, the people of New Hampshire, the workers of New Hampshire are just incredible. So I thank you for what you do, uh, but I know we have more work to do. We need to focus, and that's, I'm so grateful for this uh, summit and panel today, we really need to be focusing on the impact that higher wages can have, not only obviously on the lives of individual workers and their families, uh, but the importance of higher wages to economic growth in our state and in our country. We know that to accelerate economic growth, working families and people have to be confident in their own financial circumstances. They have to be able to afford the goods and services that they need. So as governor, I am fighting for priorities critical to raising wages and a strong middle class. We are focusing on education and job training programs within our university and community college system, as well as looking at how we can expand strong apprenticeships in our state. Uh, we know that one of the most pressing challenges for families today is making sure that higher education in whatever form it takes that makes sense for our people 
and our workers is affordable. So we have focused on lowering tuition at our community colleges. You heard Glenn say we froze it uh, last cycle at our university system, uh, but we actually were able to lower it at our community college system. We know uh, that education cost is important. We also know that access to affordable quality health care is important. And for those of you who uh, haven't followed this, know that our Medicaid expansion program, our bipartisan program that you all helped us get passed in 2014 and that started coverage for working families in New Hampshire in August of 14 is due to expire in January of 17. That was part of the compromise that we made we would let it sunset because the skeptics said we, they weren't sure it was going to work. Well, we know it's working, right? So one of the things we need to do, thank you, um, we need to be talking with members of both parties, especially uh, members of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives who say they're not sure that it's really the right thing for us. We need to remind them that when 40, almost 43,000 hardworking Granite Staters have access to affordable, quality health care, these are hardworking people, and most of them didn't have access to that before, and that that health care coverage includes access to substance abuse treatment and behavioral health treatment, that this is a program that's working. So I need your help with that, because the faster we can get that reauthorized, the greater our progress is going to be. to restore and then increase the minimum wage in New Hampshire. You remember the Bill O'Brien legislature? Remember the Bill O'Brien legislature? Well, remember that they repealed the existence of a New Hampshire minimum wage. Uh, we have been trying to restore that and increase it. We're going to need to change the legislative makeup to do that, but I will keep working for that each and every day. And you all, if you can help us speak up about the importance of restoring and increasing New Hampshire's minimum wage. It will go a long way to helping families throughout the state. Uh, I am very pleased that, all, that uh, we did have a legislative success uh, with Speaker Norelli's great leadership and Senator Fuller Clark's leadership. Uh, we did pass paycheck equity in New Hampshire. And so, uh, you know, in New Hampshire, that wage gap between women and men is still a real issue. But with the passage of that law, uh, Granite State women now know that they can get equal pay for an equal day's work. And I want to thank everybody here who helped us pass that. We'll keep focused on that issue. And just so you all know, um, it will keep coming back like a bad penny, but I will always fight against so-called right to work. It's really just a right to work for less, and it triggers a race to the bottom that we do not need here in New Hampshire. Um, I want to thank you all for every single thing that you do to strengthen our economy, to maintain our high quality of life, to keep New Hampshire moving in the right direction. Um, I know how hard you all work, and I know sometimes it can seem like you just keep working and working, and the dial doesn't necessarily move a lot. I hope it helps you to know what a difference you make. Um, about 24 years ago, just this time of year, um, a school bus pulled into my driveway in Exeter. Um, at that point in time, my now 27-year-old son was three. Ben happens to experience really severe physical disabilities. He has cerebral palsy. He's great, he's funny, he's smart, but he can't speak, he can't use his fingers, he can't walk, he gets most of his nutrition through a feeding tube. And when that school bus pulled into my driveway, it was because it was a special ed school bus. Ben, at age three, was going off to his first day of preschool. Lift lowered, I wheeled him on the lift, said goodbye, had, I think, one of the pretty typical emotions of a mother seeing her firstborn go off to school for the first time. But
But as the bus pulled out, I thought about the fact that my grandfather, who had been a pediatric neurologist in Boston, used to tell me that kids like Ben were, families like mine were encouraged to put kids like Ben into institutions. Uh, the conventional wisdom when my grandfather was practicing medicine was that the presence of those kids in a family drained the family too much, harmed the other kids. The parents weren't available to the rest of the family. I sat there 24 years ago and watched my son go off to public preschool. He was going to have a chance to learn and a chance to make friends. And he did. He graduated from Exeter High School. We figured out a way he could raise a hand to indicate yes or no, so he could indicate what he knew and what he was learning. He made friends who still hang out with him today. He's an intelligent member of the voting public, insists on going to the polls at every election day. We've worked out a system for him to vote. I sat on the stoop that day thinking that it was families that went before the Hassan family. And it was advocates and lawyers and elected officials who stood up for my son's right to be considered a full member of our society and our country and our community. Ultimately, that's what the work we all do together each and every day is about. It is the work of a democracy to realize that there are people out on the margins who count. Our core principle in the United States is that everybody counts. And that's what we want to so, so now, you may not see progress that seems tangible to you tomorrow. And you may not see it next week. But down the road, there will be a family sitting around a dinner table where both parents are home because they didn't have to work a second or third shift, where they know that the next day their child's going to get in to see a doctor and get taken care of for whatever malady they have, that they are going to be able to wake up the next morning with a job that recognizes their worth, where they work in safe conditions, and where they can dream of a better future for their children. <coughs> That's what will be the result of the work you do. Never, never lose sight of that. It can take time, but it is the story of the progress we have made as a people, as a state, and as a country, and no one is more essential to that progress than each and every one of you. Thank you, and have a great day.